Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make an American flag cake. It is, it's, it's an awesome cake and when I made it for my family and friends, it went over so well with them. They thought it was really cool and it made me feel awesome. So I figured to show you guys. Um, I am not perfect in any way and I sh you could see that in the cake. Just to let you guys know, I'm just as average at this as you guys are. I've, I've just done research. I just love doing cakes and I slowly get better at it. Um, and you guys can absolutely get better at it as well. But I hope you guys really enjoy uh, this cake because uh, I do. I love it. It's a great, awesome cake. This is the cake right here. Uh, doesn't it look great? It's a totally American flag. Um, it has many layers to it, but it's also a delicious cake. So here's the frosting. Oh, oh no! <laughs> All right, now I got it out of my finger. <laughs> so it's covered in frosting. It's oh, it's so good. It's vanilla. Um, so it. Here you go. Watch the video. <laughs> okay, bye. This is what you're gonna need. You're gonna need three boxes of cake mix. Now you can do three boxes of white and then dye the cake blue and red. Or you could cheat like I did and I have red velvet and blue velvet. So it'll make it easier. If you don't have access to classic white, just buy regular yellow cake mix and don't include the egg yolks. That's the only way you get white anyway. And then you're going to use three containers of vanilla icing. You're going to use uh, vegetable oil, of course, eggs, I didn't put those in there. I'm including blue dye because the blue velvet cake isn't dark enough and I want it a dark blue just like our flag. And then I added red and blue sprinkles for the top just to make it red, white, and blue since the icing is going to be white. You can do just red, you can do just blue whichever one you, you and you don't even need sprinkles if you don't want and you could do a different icing color you could do whatever you want that's the beauty of cake decorating you are also going to need nine inch round cake pans and flour and either a Crisco spread or a cooking spray to line the pans with and this is where you're going to need uh, the, Chris, uh, the spread or the spray, so I have just a regular spray. You're going to spray the whole thing. And you just do some flour. And you just tap lightly to coat the edges. And make sure you completely coat the bottom. And then I just dump the excess into the next pan. And do the same thing. Now the purpose of doing this is to prevent the cake from sticking to the pan. Alright, the first thing I'm going to make is the classic white. And I have my mixing bowl and I have a little hand mixer. Makes things nice and easy. If you don't, that's okay. You could just mix it with your hand. Just follow the instructions on the box. Um, if you've never done this before, just watch me and I'll show you at least one box. It's very, very easy. First thing I'm going to do is the eggs. It requires three egg whites. And like I said, that's the only reason why the cake comes out white is because it doesn't have yellow. It doesn't have the oak. Oh, your oak. <laughs> it doesn't have the yolk. So if you can't find white cake mix, just get yellow cake mix and make egg whites. And you want to add an extra egg if you do that. So the recipe is three egg whites. What you do is you carefully take off the top and then just slowly drain, just like that. So then nothing but the yolk is sitting in the egg, just like that. I'm sure some people have an easier way of doing this, uh, but this is what this is the best thing I know of. So most of it globs out anyway. You just transfer the egg a little bit and let all the egg white chain drain out. Okay. Alright, and here's the third egg. 
Here we go. Glob. Here we go. And that's it. See, just a little egg white sitting in there. I mean, not the egg white, the yolk. So we add a cup of water in. And then we're also going to add a quarter cup of vegetable oil. And then you pour that in. Doesn't matter um, what ingredient you put in first. I recommend the egg whites, just in case you mess up and a yolk falls in there, you'll be able to scoop it out with a spoon. Now the next step is just to beat the egg, to beat the batter. So you want to do 30 seconds low speed just to get it mixed, and then two minutes medium speed or with your hand, just do it for two minutes. Uh, you, there is a such thing as over mixing and under mixing. So do slow speed. All right. You also want to do a spatula to, you know, wipe the edges like this. into the pans and you want to do an even amount so that they come out the same come out the same size if you're really picky you can measure I'll just do it by eye you'll be alright I'm gonna do this It's going to vary based on your pan and your oven. I have a dark pan, so it's going to cook faster than a lighter pan. Um, and the range is between 23 and 28 minutes. So I'm going to just do a straight up 25 and see what it looks like. There's no, you know, at, 20, at 23, if it doesn't look cooked, or if you do the toothpick test and it doesn't come out clean, then, you know, you just throw it in for a little bit. There we go. The key is to put them on the same rack next to each other so that way they'll bake evenly. And you can eat in a, the darker the pan, the higher up you should go on your oven racks. Because again, the darker pans get hot faster. Alright, so the cakes came out of the oven after 25 minutes and they're nice golden color. Um, and what you do is you just get a toothpick and see if um, anything comes out on it. Good. So now what you do is you let the pan you let the cake cool off a little bit. And then we'll transfer it over to a cooling rack. So now what you want to do, if you don't have a cooling rack, like I, I don't, you can do like a sheet. This is like a cake, this is like a cutting board slash cooking sheet or I don't know what it is, but it's been super useful. I cover it with flour so it doesn't stick. If you have a drying rack, then a cooling rack, you don't need to worry about that. And what you're going to do is you're just going to, you know, lift it very carefully to loosen the cake. And then you're going to flip it over, and then it comes out like that, and then you just lay it down. Okay, only a little bit. It's nice and loose. That one came out amazing. There we go. So what you do next is you're actually going to put it in the refrigerator. We need it nice and cool and a little stiff for what we're going to be doing with, for the cake. And now you're just going to do this two more times with your other cakes. Alright, just wanted to show you what the red velvet one looked like. Nice and dark and red. Then again. Do the same thing until you're sure it's free. And there you go. Oh, I forgot my got my flour, so need it sticking because then it'll tear. There we go. Here's the blue velvet cake. It's all mixed in, so this blue isn't dark enough for me. So I'm, this is where I'm going to add the blue food coloring. So you just want to add. 
a couple of drops, a little bit at a time, and see how blue it comes out. Alright, this looks like it's about as blue as I'm going to be able to get it. Alright, so now the cake has cooled. It's a little bit stiffer. So what we need to do is two things. We need to level it off, which is cut off this hump that's formed, and then we need to cut it in half vertically because we've got to create many layers of the flag. So I get a long enough knife that's a diameter so it almost cuts through the whole thing. That way it lets you just go right across instead of having to like turn it or anything like that. So I just you just kind of go like this and then just cut straight across. With this cake, you're going to have a lot of excess cake, unfortunately. So you can either throw it away. I save it because then I just use it to munch on for snack. And then you just want to kind of trim a little bit and kind of look at it. Because what this does will let the layers lay flat instead of bow down. Okay. And so now we're going to cut it in half the long ways like this. And then this is the part where, this is probably the hardest part because you want to make sure everything is completely even. You don't want to make one layer thicker than the other. See, I'm already doing that. So you just want to make sure that you keep everything level. So now you have two discs. And then you're going to do this for the other red cake and the other and then the two white pieces. And then this goes back into the fridge because this part that we cut off has to harden again because we have to put um, frosting on it and, it and we don't want the crumbs to crumble and make it even harder. So here's our white piece. I'm going to do the same. Level it up. And then we cut it in half. Again, you want to make sure you are You definitely want this piece to air out the most, the uh, piece where you've been cut, so we can harden it a little so we can um, get it, see and there we go, all cut in half. Very thin pieces, they look super thin, but by the time you get this cake put all together, it's pretty much three layers of cake, it's a lot of cake. Now with the blue ones, uh, we're not cutting them in half. What we're going to do is just very skin off a very thin layer of cake, including this, you know, the rough edge right here. Just very, just enough to get the edge off, get the topping off. And you'll and you'll see why by the time uh, we put this cake together. What I'm actually going to do 
is store these into the fridge overnight to make sure they're um, they get stiff and hard enough to make it because we have to stack these and we have to uh, frost them and if it's too soft it's going to make it very difficult for them. Okay, so now we're going to start putting the cake together and you want to start on the plate or tray that it's going to be on forever until the cake is eaten. So this is a tray, um, this is a bottom of a cake carrier because I'm going to bring this cake to a party. I'm not eating the cake all by myself. <laughs> um, so because once you start building it, you're not going to be able to move it or transfer it. And you want to definitely want to make sure that if you're doing a cake carrier that it's high enough because this cake will end up being roughly three layers. Um, and then you also, of course, want to make sure it's big enough and stable enough. And what we're going to do is just coat the top layer. And it's a little stiff now because it's been in the refrigerator, but it's still soft. So we're going to coat it. Um, and then you could use, I'm going to use a, I have a spreader, uh, but you can use a regular knife. It doesn't matter what you use. I just happen to have this. Um, now it's going to get crummy. See, there's crumbs already coming off of it. And that's okay because this isn't the top layer. So you're just going to spread it. And you want to make sure that your frosting is room temperature. You never want to refrigerate your frosting before you um, before you frost your cake. It doesn't need to. Most frostings don't need to be refrigerated before it's open anyway. Once you open it, then yeah, you'll have to refrigerate it. So the next layer is the white layer, the white cake layer, because it's a flat, it's an American flag, so it's red, white, and red and white. Um, so I'm gonna put the soft side face down. Um, so that way the white frosting is against the white top and then it'll be easier to frost on the bottom. So this darker one will be towards the red. So then you just place it and make sure that everything's lined up and that it's even. Don't worry about getting the, the, this dirty because we'll just wipe it off at the end. So there, now it's placed and it's nice and even layer. And now we're gonna frost the top. You definitely want to glob on a lot of frosting because you might tear the cake if you're trying to spread on just a little, a small amount. Not so help you get the edges. So here is the next red layer, and again, I'm going to place it face down just to make it easier for frosting. And again you want to line it up. You can see I didn't cut it super evenly right here, but that's okay. For one, I'm not a perfect baker. And again, it'll just get frosted over that it won't even, you won't even see it. So you just want to make sure it's lined up evenly and that it's not like tipping over or anything like that. All right, and here we go. And again, place it face down. Now if you happen to have cut your cake a little unevenly like I did, the thicker parts, it's like this part is thin so I put it over a thick part of this just so that it comes out even here. And when you're layering the cake you want to pick your, your uh, four best layers for this one. You want the, the four thickest most even ones. And then for the re rest of it I'll show you you'll need better insides. So and again, we're going to frost this. So I'm just gonna scoop it out to make it easier. Right. Now it's time for the blue part. I'm gonna move this out of the way just for a moment because we don't need it, at, need it yet. 
So now if we just layer these on top of the cake like that, when you cut it in, the, it'll be a whole stripe of blue, um, and it won't represent the square block of blue with white stars. So what we do is, what I'm going to do is cut out the middle of this cake, um, and then the middle will be replaced with red and white layers. And I'll show you. It sounds a lot harder than it actually is. Alright, so what I got here is a small glass bowl. And you, and you could use anything. If you want to do it by freehand, you can. It just might not be too circular. And you, but this looks even enough where there's a good amount of blue, but enough room for the stripes to go inside. So once you make sure it's completely centered, you just pretty much get your knife and you cut around. you just pop out the center and then you have like an even very even circle all right so these two rings are going to sit on top of each other and you want to put the crumb sides together no frosting it's just going to be one layer like this together So now we bring back our cake layer, and this is where we transfer the ring over. And then just place it on there and make sure it's completely lined up. So now we have to do the red and white stripes on the inside. So once again, I'm going to move this out of the way. And we're going to cut the same exact kind of hole into the cake. This doesn't matter if it's um, completely middle. You just need to find the best part of the cake. Just in case you see like here I didn't cut even the cake is falling apart. So I'm going to move it over a little bit and just cut around. And now these pieces are, we're not going to use these pieces so you can throw them away. And then we do the same for the white cake. So now we're really going to frost the the red disc is going to go first because the, the next the previous layer was white. So I'm going to frost the top. And we'll put these two pieces together. And the cake is really soft because of all the cutting we just did. Now if you want, you could always free, uh, free, drop these in the freezer real quick. We'll put them in the refrigerator real quick if you want. And now you want to put the top layer on. just like that. Alright, and so now we're gonna put now we're gonna put our disc right in here. And you just press. So it's okay if it bulges because you know unless you have a cake a very specific cake level or it might not be level enough, but it's okay if the top, you know, hoops over. All right, so now I'm just going to wipe this off, and I'm just using a damp paper towel. So now my spreader is coated with some red crumbs, and so is this. So what you want to do is just try and get rid of the frosting that has the red crumbs in it. Because you want a nice, perfectly decorated white cake. Alright, now I'm just going to take the spoon and blob it all on just to make it easier. 
Don't worry, you're going to use it all. Okay, there's a lot of cake to cover. So first we're just going to start spreading it. We'll fine tune what it looks like afterwards. And again, you just want to use huge globs of it. You don't want to press too hard because then you'll wipe all the frosting off. And you'll also smear some crumbs. And don't worry about it looking perfect yet. We'll fine tune it once we get the whole thing covered in frosting. And you just want to cover. Alright, so you may have noticed that, so everything is covered, and you may have noticed that the frosting keeps sticking to the knife, which tears the cake, or any of those. So what I discovered is doing the final one to make this look prettier is to get yourself a bowl of hot water. And what you do is you swish it around a little bit, you know, just carefully to get the, coat the knife in water, in hot water. And then what it's going to do is help you help it slide off and and you just go very lightly. And then as you feel this the frosting start to stick again, then you just just continue to go lightly around. And see how it smooths it out. It'll blend in. So I'm going to add more frosting to the top. So you have your blue and red sprinkles. And you can just throw it on there or you can do a pattern, whatever you want. So I'm just going to kind of sprinkle it. Toss the sides. There we go. You could leave it like that or you could just or you can add to it. I'm going to add to it. Whoa. kind of looks like fireworks. All right. And now we're going to clean the sides again. And just very carefully make sure you don't hit your cake. Again, I have a wet paper towel. And now you're done. Now you can serve it. Now, yes, of course, you don't know how it's going to look until it's cut into. When I first did this, I was so nervous because I didn't know if I did it right or not. And it turned out amazing. and Everybody was super impressed. I'm going to cut it open for you so you don't have to wait. Okay. Let me just cut a normal piece. There we go. And there you go. There you have your American flag cake. And if you can look inside there. There you go. Isn't that excellent?